consumers turn to piracy, by and large, when they can't get the product through legitimate channels. So there needed to be a legitimate market offering coming from the record labels, and they couldn't get their act together for years to put that in the market. It was frustrating to watch this long, deleterious collapse of, the indust of an industry that was producing something that I loved so much. That was never our intention. We never wanted to see that happen. Music sales peaked in 1999, and since then, it's been years of decline. You're now on the board of Spotify. Do you think that streaming services can end, end the years of decline that the music industry has been facing? I think we've now turned the corner and we're getting back into growth based on what I've seen at Spotify, based on what I've seen coming out of Apple. It looks like it's bottomed out in terms of, you know, it, for a while, Spotify could replace uh, CD sales um, the decline in CD sales and the decline in downloads, but not both. But how do you convince people to pay for services when there's so much available for free online, whether it's YouTube or elsewhere? This question of free versus paid is, is a question that's plagued the music industry all the way back to, you know, radio. I would say that the services like Spotify that monetize at a, at a really great rate where we see you know, users coming in to a free channel. We see at least a third of those users over time becoming paid customers. There's obviously added value, and that added value is convenience. It's the ability to make a playlist, share playlists with the outside world, organize your music library. It's all of the things we do to help surface music that you wouldn't have otherwise known about. You're known as the guy who dropped the from the Facebook. Um, I know you and Mark were very close. Give me a status update on your relationship with Mark. Mark and I don't talk nearly as much as we used to. Mm -hmm. There was a period of time where, uh, you know, we continued to consult every day. But uh, yeah, I mean, g generally, generally speaking, it's a it's a good relationship. There's a scene in The Social Network where you and Mark Zuckerberg meet for the first time, and what some people mm -hmm. may not know is after that, I believe, you go hang out with Travis Kalanick, who's now the CEO of Uber. This was before Uber. Is that yes. true? You guys, you guys met up yeah, and you I went to a did. club or something? I, I don't know that I went to a club. Actually, actually, Mark, I think, went out to a club. Tell us about you know, the Travis Tra Kalanick Travis of, is, of Travis 2004. Is, Travis hasn't really changed at all. I mean, he, 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 he's sort of in some ways the perfect CEO of, of this company because he enjoys the... Uh, he enjoys... He feeds off of the conflict and the... And the, and the controversy he he's very good at dealing with complex situations where he you know he's being attacked from all sides i think there's i think there's i think he he would he would thrive as a as a as a you know wartime leader i mean he he's really? very good general kalanick uh, under under those circumstances and uh, you know i think i think you know, there's a lot of companies that would have been way too boring for, for Travis. How impressed are you with what Uber has accomplished? Do you think it's worth $62.5 billion? You know, do I think any of these companies are worth uh, the val their private market valuations? I think it's hard to say. There's a disconnect between private company and public company valuations, and the companies wait too long to go public, uh, and then they don't do so well in the public markets, and there's uh, you know, you're seeing, you know, you, the Fidelity write down, for instance. So there's been a, a large number of high profile write downs. Snapchat, where, Dropbox. Yeah, right, exactly. It's not clear what any of these things are worth um, until the market, the public market, values them. Because in these close knit uh, private markets, you know, you can, you can do various things to engineer the valuation. Do you think a company like Uber or Airbnb, should they be going public sooner? The traditional path would have been to go public sooner. Something happened post Facebook, and I may have inadvertently play, played a role in, in in this occurring, which was the development of this robust secondary market, where where suddenly hedge funds and and private wealth managers and various you know sovereign wealth funds and so forth began to invest very heavily in private companies. Um, you started that. You started the secondary markets. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't start everything. I certainly didn't start. I certainly didn't start secondary markets. But but we we encouraged at Facebook 
a robust secondary market. We were much more open to, to having a secondary market, and be, right. in part because we had a longer-term vision, and you need to give people an opportunity to take liquidity along the way. What do you think is the biggest threat to Facebook's business? You know, I think Facebook's business is, has so much growth left in it. Mm. Uh, the, the, so it, it's really value extraction. It's value that's been stored for a long time, and then there's a lot of very smart people trying to figure out how do we unlock that value. Um, that process is, you know, another 10 or 20 years before we, we, we start to see we start to see what that looks like.